Hello, my name is Michael Luna. I'm an interventional cardiologist from UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Today, I'll be talking about vessel embolization with specific focus on the use of coils and plugs. I have no disclosures. What I thought I'd do is use the Fontan patient as a guide for this quick talk. As many of you know, the Fontan population not uncommonly forms abnormal vascular collaterals on both venous and arterial side that uh, not too infrequently require intervention. This is an example of one of those vascular abnormalities that can form in Fontan patients. This particular patient presented with cyanosis. What you see here is called a venovenous collateral. That is a venous structure that originates somewhere along the systemic venous system that then terminates with drainage into the pulmonary venous system and provides a source of cyanosis for these patients. You can appreciate how tortuous and complex these venous structures can sometimes be. The complexity of these collaterals falls on a spectrum. This is a good example of a collateral that falls on the lower end of the spectrum where you have a good linear structure with a good landing zone for use of embolization devices. At the other end of the spectrum is a patient like this, one with very complex Fontan anatomy and physiology. If you look carefully, there is a venous structure that originates from the left hepatic venous system and drains directly into the left atrium. This collateral is very large and tortuous and provides a prominent source of cyanosis for this patient. Now let's talk about our devices and we'll start with coils first. There are a variety of coil platforms out on the market. What I'll be discussing here are aspects of coils that can differentiate one platform from the other. You can have coils made up of 0.014 inch wire all the way up to 0.038 inch wire. The coil diameters themselves can be as small as one millimeter and as large as 45 millimeters. The shapes of the coil can be in a simple variety versus complex shapes, just like you can see here on the right. The traditional coil was a pushable one, meaning there was no attachment to a delivery cable and the coil was simply pushed into the target vessel. There are more contemporary iterations that do come in detachable varieties where the coil is only released from the delivery cable once it is felt to be in appropriate position. And the makeup of the coil can be the usual bare metal variety versus fibered with synthetic materials such as polyester and can also be coated with hydrogel to promote uh, vessel occlusion. There are two major plug platforms that are available in the U.S. for use in vessel embolization. The first shown here is the Amplatzer vascular plug family. There are actually four AVPs offered but only three are currently available in the U.S. The first is the original Amplatzer vascular plug which is a single lobe device you see here on the far left. The AVP2, on the other hand, is a tri-lobe device made up of three bodies of equal diameter but with a wider middle lobe. The AVP4 is the most recent iteration and is made up of two lobes. Now, the major difference between the original AVP and the AVP2 and AVP4 is the nitinol mesh. The original AVP has a frame that is made up of a single layer of nitinol wire as opposed to the other two which are made up of multi-layer braided nitinol wire which theoretically could lead to quicker and more complete vessel thrombosis. The second plug platform is the microvascular plug. This device also has a nitinol frame, but the mechanism of thrombosis is really driven by the PPFE covering, which is applied to the proximal portion of the device, as you can see here. Similar to the AVPs, this plug is fully resheathable should repositioning of the device be required. The decision to use coils versus plugs is really a multifactorial one. First of all, which devices and how many are used will be dictated by how urgent, quick, and complete vessel thrombosis is. For example, a hemorrhage indication might be treated very differently than a hypoxia indication. Vessel anatomy also plays an important role in this decision. Not only is diameter and length of vessel important, but also characteristics like vessel tortuosity, the presence of multiple feeder vessels, and how good of a device landing zone is present. High versus low flow systems should also be in your calculus when deciding on devices. And at the end of all of this, for some complex vascular structures, what embolization devices are chosen will be entirely dictated by what catheters can be delivered into the target vessel. Your access site can also affect your ability to deliver your sheets and or catheters 
and should be considered carefully. And remember, there will be situations where combinations of plugs and coils will be required to get an adequate cessation of flow through the vessel. It is important to know ahead of time what delivery catheters are required for these embolization devices so that you can avoid scrambling at the time of the actual case. Again, there are too many coils on the market to individually go over, so just remember that delivery catheters required can range anywhere from an internal diameter of 0.017 inch to 0.047 inch. The plugs, on the other hand, each have their own specifications. The original AVP and AVP2 can both be delivered through guide catheters ranging from 5 to 9 French. AVP4 requires catheters with an internal diameter of 0.038 inch. And when considering MVPs, the 3 and 5 variety require catheters with internal diameters of 0.021 inch and 0.027 inch respectively, while MVP7 and 9 require 4 and 5 French outer diameter catheters respectively. Remember, both with coils and with plug delivery, telescoping systems with catheters and sheets can increase the stability of the catheter uh, and the support required to deliver the devices. When sizing your device, there is a balance that must be met. That is, ensuring device stability by choosing an adequate device diameter, but also predicting how that particular device will act within the vessel with respect to device expansion and lengthening properties once deployed. For coils, the recommendations vary depending on the platform used, but oversizing to the vessel diameter can range anywhere from 0 to 20%. For AVPs, the general recommendation is oversizing of the device by 30 to 50% of the vessel diameter. And you can see there the available sizes for all three AVPs. MVPs are a little different. Each of the four available sizes, 3, 5, 7, and 9, have a range of vessel diameters that are recommended for use. Remember, oversizing is always preferred. For example, if you have a vessel that measures 3.0 millimeters in diameter, using an MVP5 would be preferable. We'll end by going back to the Fontan cases I presented earlier. This particular Vino Venus collateral had some feeder vessels distally that I wanted covered. For this, I used AVP4 devices with good results. The proximal trunk had an adequate length and diameter for use of an AVP2, which you can see ended up sitting very nicely at the ostium and led to complete occlusion of the collateral. This collateral was a more straightforward vessel but because there were feeder branches that originated very proximally, I wanted to pack in a good amount of coils to ensure adequate coverage of them. I started by laying down distal AVP4s and then packing 0.035 inch coils proximal to that. The second image is a good example of delivery of basic pushable coils with the final image demonstrating complete cessation of flow. Although this overall Fontan patient was quite complex, once my delivery sheath was advanced distally, it's just a matter of deploying multiple AVP2s to occlude flow. You can see that the most proximal disc sits right at the ostium and no residual flow is present. This last case is a good example of how a single MVP, when well sized, can do a great job at immediately occluding the vessel. The final thought I'll leave you with is that, although off-label, remember that you can consider other devices if they are available to you and you need to improvise in a particular case. These are two that can be considered. The Amplatzer VSD Occluder and the Amplatzer Duct Occluder 2. The Muscular VSD Occluder has discs measuring up to 26 millimeters in diameter and the Post-MI VSD Occluder has discs up to 34 millimeters in diameter in case you're working with a large vascular structure. The ADO2 has discs measuring up to 12 millimeters in diameter and is a very deliverable device. I'll end here and I'm happy to take uh, any questions by email at michael.luna at utsouthwestern.edu. Thank you.